Hello everybody, welcome back. This is part 14 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build and we're moving on quickly from part 13 that was posted just last night Friday. And you'll know that in part 13 we built the funnel bases uh, and today we're going to finish the job off and do the funnels themselves including the uh, after funnel modification that uh, I described in part 13. So I'm going to get straight over to the bench and let's get that funnel sorted out. So we can get on with these uh, now. And as we've said before, we've had a look and there's about two millimetres difference in what I'm going to call the uh, length of the funnel. So you can see the difference here. This is the aft one. This is the forward one. And the modification Pontos and Pontos and Pontos uh, provide in the etched frets. Uh, they're actually two different numbered frets, five and six. Um, and they are different. They look they look more or less the same, but they are different because. Uh, all the parts for the funnels cater for the different sizes so the foil here which is the part that wraps around the funnel like that is obviously sized for the different sizes uh, so five is the larger one and six had a slightly shorter foil and shorter uh, ancillary parts such as the walkway inside the funnel and the uh, grill at the top of the funnel. So fret six is designed for the smaller uh, trumpeter part. As I've said what I'm going to do is I've got uh, two fret fives so the two larger uh, foils and larger funnel parts uh, which means that I can expand the smaller funnel and wrap the larger foils around so I should end up with two identical uh, size funnels so you can see the two uh, foils are the same length from uh, two identical fret fives so that's how we're going to go about things and the first thing I'm going to need to do is split the uh, after funnel along the sides and I'm going to have to put in a filler piece of round about two millimeters uh, by the time I've made the cut it might be a little bit more than that because the width of the saw blade will take out a little bit more material so I might just have to make an adjustment to make a little bit more than a two millimeter insert into here but we'll see we'll just keep on testing it against uh, the forward funnel until we've got uh, got them the same i do want this to be uh, a perpendicular cut in other words straight up and down so i don't want it an angle or ragged i want it as straight as possible because i want the uh, styrene filler to have as much contact point as possible so I want to get uh, a line marked out on this this part's been glued up for a long time I think I uh, glued the two halves together probably a couple of years ago when I got the kit actually so it's uh, it's a pretty solid uh, joint of the two halves so there's uh, my mark so I'll use a cutting disc uh, to go through the mark that I've made So 
So the uh, cut has probably left getting on for another millimetre of lost uh, material. So I'm probably going to end up inserting something like two and a half to three millimetres of filler uh, to get the two funnels to match up in size. So we'll continue and uh, separate these uh, forward and back sides of the funnel. Uh, clean up the edges a little bit make sure they're straight there's not much uh, chance of getting them the wrong way around but uh, just mark them port and starboard the next thing I'm going to do is clean the forward funnel completely, remove the bands and the moulded riveting so that I've got the uh, basic size uh, correct and I can then match uh, these parts to the stripped down uh, forward funnel. and uh, just sand the rivets off so we can get this perfectly smooth we don't need to preserve this uh, ridge along the top the uh, new foils provide all the detail that uh, we want so that's the forward funnel cleaned up and this is one of the funnel foils. This is uh, the fret six uh, foil. So it's for the smaller of the two. It's for the aft funnel. And you can see that it would be short on the on the forward funnel moulding. So that's uh, redundant. I've been using it actually just to test the bending of the part and the difficulty with fitting a part like this to a curved surface is the join is on the curve at the back. It would have been better to have the join along the flatter side uh, because it's always very difficult to get the brass part to uh, conform to the curve right at the end here. It's got a tendency to spring away and for that reason, this is one of the very few parts of brass that uh, I'm going to anneal. And that's because it removes the uh, springiness out of the metal. And it enables you to get this nice tight curve at the back so that it conforms to the curve at the back of the plastic uh, without trying to spring away too much because that would obviously put a strain on the glue uh, and it would be wanting to pull away all the time so you can see there that even after annealing it's uh, still quite springy but I've got that curve at the back uh, that will help it to uh, conform but before we do any of that uh, brass work I want to get the two pieces of plastic to be the same size now that I've got the two parts, uh, the two funnels cleaned up, I can just measure the sizes. Obviously this one will have changed a tiny bit because of the sanding. And it's now 38.6. Uh, and the aft one with the obviously with the cut it's going to be a bit shorter now than when we measured it before 
and it's now it's about 35.9 So that's uh, 2.7 mil difference. So that's the amount of filler that we're going to have to put in to get this uh, to get the two funnels to be the same. So I'm going to fill that 2.7 mil gap with some plastic strip. So this is two by 0.75. So I want uh, probably three pieces will do it. I'm just using what I've got. Obviously, if you can get a piece of uh, strip that's exactly the right size to fill, then happy days. But uh, I'm going to have to make up the size. The other way of doing this would be to put some... Uh, plastic sheet inside here uh, to bridge the two parts and then use filler to uh, fill the gap in but uh, I'm going to do it this way start off with a couple of pieces of the two mil And I want to get them uh, reasonably flush with the inside. Obviously you're not going to be able to see too far into the funnels. But up at the top here I want to get uh, the plastic flush. And I'll put another piece on top of that to completely fill the space. And it'll just add a bit more strength as well. and then just turn one of the strips on the side. So I'll do the same with the other edge. I keep on dropping things this morning because my hands are so cold. The uh, shirt hasn't had time to warm up yet. And it's uh, pretty chilly outside. I'm a bit late today as well because uh, I had to go down to the doctors for my flu jab this year. I thought given everything that's going on in the world the last thing you need is uh, flu on top of everything else so Hopefully I'll get through winter without flu. Touch wood. I think the other thing I'll do is at the bottom of the funnel here I'll add some uh, I'll add some sheet. So just down at the bottom end there. where it's not going to be seen. So uh, we've actually got two point Two point seven five millimeters of filler in there, so it's um, it's just a tad bigger. It's point zero five more than we wanted, but that's just because of the size of the stock that I used. So I can just hone this down now. Uh, bit by bit and that's uh, very close now I 
I think that's it. So I can now glue that up. I just want to make sure that's all in a straight line. What I'm looking for here is to make sure that the two sides are perfectly in line. I don't want to step uh, on the outside, otherwise the foil isn't going to go uh, onto these parts properly. So I'll leave that to uh, set up for a while. And uh, while it's doing that, I'll get on and prep the foils uh, that wrap around the outside of the funnels. And the first thing I'm going to do is just anneal these parts. So I'm going to do the annealing of the foils now. And I just use uh, a little uh, cooking blowtorch. This one's from uh, a company in the UK called ProCook which sells all sorts of kitchen uh, things and I got this courtesy of my lovely daughter Sally so thanks for that Sal these just run on uh, lighter fluid butane and uh, normally I would do this uh, on a tile or a hard surface away from the bench but uh, just on this one occasion I'll do it here just so you can see what I'm doing you don't need a massive uh, heat on this and obviously if you don't do it anywhere near any inflammable paint or glues or anything like that so all I'm doing is heating the surface up and you'll be able to see it changing colour as we do. I'm not so concerned about the middle part which is why I've got the tweezers there. So the metal will discolour but don't worry about that it will also cockle up a little bit and don't worry about that either, it'll flatten out again. So that's all you need. And it looks as though you've uh, made a right mess of it, but actually uh, it's perfectly alright. So with the uh, brass annealed, I can start to roll it now. And the important uh, bits to roll are the very edges here. I want to, if anything, over bend it a bit. And uh, I want to use, I'm just using a soft stick here, a rubber pad. And I'm just using a, a round knife handle. I want to get right to the edge of that. And as we're rolling this, I just want to test fit it against the parts. <coughs> so with the rolling started, I've made a mark on the center line of the funnel here. And that's because I want to get this brass positioned exactly right. So I've made that mark and I can go around now and do the rolling as, until the until the etched brass fits fairly snugly around the plastic. So I don't need to do too much around here where the uh, sides flatten out a little bit. 
so I can put a little mark on that where the sides are flat so basically I don't want to be doing any much rolling there it doesn't have to be perfectly uh, aligned I just want it enough so that we're not going to get a lot of spring off of the parts so you can see I've left this flat piece here and we're going to go right the way around 180 degrees for the next section you want to keep the brass perpendicular just keep on checking this I'll make my marks again on the flat surface just keep on testing it that's probably enough actually just get a little bit more on this uh, front side just so it takes a bit more of the spring out of it this brass would not have uh, conformed without being annealed or it would have been very difficult to glue and it would always have been under tension whereas now it's forming itself a lot more closely to the shape that we want you can see that's not uh, doesn't require a lot of pressure to get that uh, where we want it so I'm happy with that I just want to put a mark on to help me when I come to glue the foil on so I can go back to the after funnel now and I'm going to clean up the uh, infill that we made obviously we want this nice and flush two funnels that are the same size now so the foil that I've just bent round the forward funnel should also fit round the after one just check make sure it does yep rather than have an overlap of this brass I've just taken off the very edge uh, of this of I've just taken off the very edge of this side so that actually they're going to join together flush rather than any sort of overlap so that just gives a better uh, finish at the back so I'm happy with that now it's a nice uh, tight straight fit I'm just smoothing out the inside here because obviously you can look down into the funnels so I'm just going down probably halfway and beyond that there's not going to be much visible because I'll be painting down at the bottom black 
This is one of the uh, etched brass walkways that fits inside the funnel. So I can just check that for size against the reconfigured uh, after funnel. So you can see there that we've got uh, that size properly now. So with that I can fit the uh, back foil. I'll do it in stages uh, and I'm going to need some thick super glue for this. So I'm looking for my mark. And just keep the foil nice and straight on the sides. So I'll carry on round the rest of the foil. And I'll run some thin in at the back. Now here I just want to squeeze these together just to get a nice tight fit at the front. So that's the first foil on. I'll give that a bit of a clean up, there's bits of uh, glue on it. But the important thing is that I've got a nice tight even fit down the back and uh, with a bit of uh, work that'll look okay. One of the things we're going to have to do to get these to fit onto the base is because I've extended uh, the part this uh, location slots in the wrong place now so we can just take that off So that's uh, been cleaned up now and I'll fit the other foil to the forward funnel then we can get on and modify these two parts which obviously need to be expanded to fit the new size uh, funnel. So that's the forward funnel wrapped and that doesn't need any more modification now. It's ready for all the rest of the etch brass uh, funnel grills at the top. But we just need to get the base unit and cap to fit onto this expanded uh, aft funnel. So we added 2.7 millimeters to the funnel so we're going to have to do the same for these two uh, pieces as well. So I'll use a similar method and just cut straight through longitudinally and add the spacing pieces in. So we just need to be careful with these because I've cut the key off and we need to make sure that they're orientated correctly because there are some of the pressure release valve uh, chimneys and there are a pair of them at certain locations so obviously we want to get the thing the right way around and the pair on the aft funnel the pair was at this back port side so i'm just going to mark that 
just to make sure that I don't get it mixed up. So I need to uh, fill these pieces in now and uh, I'll go straight across with these. This will need quite a bit of uh, shaping once this plastic set up. This is uh, 0.75 mil strip. So I'm going to need uh, three or four to uh, bridge the gap. See how we're getting on. This is actually trickier than filling in the actual funnel. I just want to sand this piece now so I just get the profile of the shape of this base. So we're getting there with uh, these parts. The uh, fits quite snug, which uh, isn't a bad thing. At least it uh, shows that we've got the sizing pretty accurately. These are starting to come together a bit now. But uh, there's quite a bit of filling in here. And I just want to make sure that it's absolutely set up properly. A part like this won't stand uh, a lot of messing about with. So I'm going to leave them these parts re need to really harden up now before I can sand them. Uh, otherwise I'm just going to keep on moving the part around and it's never going to set up. So I'm going to leave those overnight to really go firm and then I'll come back and do the shaping. Just drop the walkway in, or oh, the perimeter walkway. Quite a precarious perch if you were standing on that I would have thought looking down into the uh, boiler rooms. Here's the uh, first of the brass in. This is the walkway that goes all the way around the uh, outside of the funnel. And we have a bridge piece that goes across. Now again this is another time to be careful because the part that's on the fret on fret 5 is too short uh, and again Pr Pontos have provided a uh, correction for that in the form of this fret 21 so it includes the uh, front to back walkways and the top of the uh, funnel grill So if you get to yours and you're puzzled that that won't fit, uh, that's the reason. There's this correction uh, elsewhere in your uh, etched parts. So the first thing to do is to uh, bend the uh, railings up. 
I'll just uh, finesse that with the pliers. So there are two location marks uh, on the outer ring. Uh, just to locate this little step up. Next we need to fit these uh, little railings round the inside. So obviously they need to have a curve on them to follow the curve of the funnel. So it's just a case of trial and error I think with these. Okay, that's the uh, internal walkways and railings done inside the funnel. I need to do the other one uh, as well. And then we can go on to the part that I'm not looking forward to, which is doing the funnel caps uh, and the frame around the top of the funnel cap. So those are the main elements of the funnels. I just need to do the uh, caps on top and the frames around the caps and I also need to do the relief uh, valves around the sides uh, which just need drilling out really uh, at the top to hollow the uh, exhausts out so I just need to brace myself and do these uh, frames around the caps now So that's the first funnel cap uh, assembled or more or less there's a couple of bits uh, to go on. Now these are so fragile that I'm not going to fit the actual top part until right at the end of the build. If anything falls on these or I catch them they're just going to disintegrate because they're so so fine and I've got to say that it's probably one of the most complicated difficult pieces of etch brass work that I've ever tackled really and I was dreading it and I was right to dread it because it's just they're just so um, fine the parts that they bend they twist and uh, I'm reasonably happy with the end result but I think maybe Trumpeter got it right in their solution in their etch brass parts because they've provided the frame at the top in one piece whereas these are all separate parts in the Pontos set and it's just mind-blowingly uh, difficult to put together I hope I can do better and a neater job when I come to do the uh, second one. But uh, I think on I think trumpets have probably got it right. These are less fine, these parts, uh, but I don't think they're noticeably different, really, and they're probably much easier to uh, assemble. So uh, anyway, we've got it done and I'll uh, press on now to the next one. What I'll try and do in the next one, I didn't film that. It would have just been too much of a distraction really to be looking at the uh, camera and what have you when I'm doing that sort of thing. So uh, the best I think I can do for the second cap is just to give you some idea of how I approached it but uh, if you've got the Pontos set then it's every man for himself I think because they're a nightmare 
and I need something stronger than coffee. Uh, and it looks a hell of a lot better under a coat of primer. The other advantage is that uh, it's obviously painted black so that'll hide a multitude of sins as well. So uh, there we go, let's press on with the other one. So the way I've approached this is to first of all fit this lower ring first and the knack with it really is to make sure that you don't distort the part at all. Once it starts to twist and bend uh, you're going to have trouble locating the rest of the frame on top. So you want to preserve its natural uh, shape and obviously centralize it on the top of the funnel cap here and once we've got it nice and square so I've aligned these two little slots here with the center line of the funnel and if I've done that everything else should be square hopefully uh, but as I say the, the most important thing is not to distort this part at all so get it off the frame get it off the fret and lay it on top of the funnel I just tacked it down with some uh, medium super glue and then I ran thin super glue all the way around uh, the other thing to be aware of is not to get any glue into these little slots uh, these tiny little slots here and that's because the other frame parts actually clip into those so that's the first bit done the next step is to fit the three transverse frames uh, across the middle of the funnel so that's the next step so the next step is done there we've got the three part 402's fitted and they actually more or less clip in because we haven't distorted the ring all the distances are correct so it's much easier uh, when I think when the, f the first one I did the first one I did I got this ring uh, bent a little bit and once I'd done that it was a struggle then to get everything else to line up so uh, much easier this way the next step is to put these next pair in and they're a single piece but you just bend them to the angle that you want so they go from there to the middle and back down to the other side so uh, we'll get those in now so we'll do 403 first which is the one that goes from here to the center to here uh, and then the last one is 404 which goes from there to the center to there the last thing we'll do is fit the central brace that spans the whole of the funnel fore and aft okay so that's those parts in and we want to do, to do the longitudinal uh, piece now which goes from here to here and joins all these up and we're using the part 401 from the uh, correction number two it's fret 21 the original uh, part 401 here on uh, the fret 5 is too short uh, so we've got this correction so don't struggle with the one that's on fret 5 or 6 because uh, it won't fit you need to use the correction piece so that's coming together now and I'll fit there's three little uh, circles that uh, three little discs that fit onto the uh, tops and all the junctions of these pieces so I'm going to fit those and it'll probably strengthen the join a little bit. Okay, the last job is to fit the upper ring that goes round the sides here. And the important thing with this again is not to distort the part and also to make sure that it's perfectly level. 
it's very difficult to get these cross members at exactly the same height uh, so you've got to use so you've just got to use your eye to make sure that when you put the upper ring on it sits uh, it sits horizontal to the rest of the funnel so I just want to start with um, just getting a bit of glue onto the end piece here because all I'm going to do is just tack the ring on and gradually work round until it's come it's in place all the way around it actually gets easier as you work around because the ring this top piece starts to stiffen up a little bit so just leave it to set don't do any more until uh, the front and back have set up okay then you can start to lift the rest of the part into place so just one or two spots here and there but uh, They'll clean up okay and I'll get the top coat on. I'll uh, use rubber black for these, it's just an off black, it's not quite as stark as using a flat black paint. So uh, they've come up quite nice. Okay nearly uh, done now and I need to fit these, I think there's some sort of tensioning guys uh, on the funnel sides. So these are from the Pontos set obviously. And I'm only going to glue them at the bottom and the top. The locations are marked by some marks on the funnel foils. And again, if we at all possible, try and avoid twisting these. Just take them straight off the fret and apply them. And that's all that it needs. So there's nine or ten of those to do all the way around the perimeter of the funnel. Finally before we do any painting I just want to prepare these I think they're just uh, the pressure release uh, valves you can see photographs of uh, hood with loads of steam coming off these so I'm guessing that that's what they were There's plenty of location uh, screw attachment points to clean up on these and we need uh, five of them for each funnel. It's good that Trumpeter have hollowed the ends out. Uh, that saved a bit of a job. I thought I was going to have to do those. I think I mentioned earlier on that uh, I was going to drill them out but obviously there's no need to do that. So these need the sprue attachment gates sanding off. And then the mould line I'm just cleaning up with uh, a sharp knife. 
just to scrape along the seam or get rid of it. So these, uh, I'm going to call them valves. They obviously go into these uh, holes all the way around the edge. They have got a little key on them at the bottom just so that you make, just to help you get them at the right angle. There are no um, pins or anything on the tops of these just to hold them tight into the funnel itself. So uh, I'm just going to tack them with a drop of uh, super glue at the back, just where the bracket is. Actually, there are two, so I'll apply a little bit further down as well. And the important thing with these is just to get them vertical. So I'm just following the line of the riveting on the funnel. And the two on this uh, front edge go together. And the last thing here is uh, this chimney here. I think it's actually from the galley. I'm not sure. I'll check up on that. There we go. So I have both funnels ready to paint now. You'll notice that on the aft one I've uh, shaped the back of the uh, base here with a flat along the back and the two angles cut into the side. So it now fits onto the uh, base that we built last week. So they look okay. I'm going to get them over and uh, get them painted now. Okay, so uh, those are the funnels done. They've come out pretty good. I just lay them on the side very carefully. You can just compare. So those are the two uh, funnels equally sized now and ready to go on the model. I did mention before that uh, I wasn't going to fit the funnel caps and that's because they're too fragile really. And I might even leave the whole funnel assembly off and just fit the uh, funnel bases that I did in the last video. So I'll just get a photograph of these uh, and then we'll get back over to the model. Right, so back at the ship now and I've just temporarily put the uh, funnel bases and the funnels onto the model. Uh, they're not fixed in place at the minute. I don't want to do that just yet. Um, it's surprising that once you get the funnels on how it transforms the whole model really and it really does start to look like uh, the hood. Uh, these funnels were very distinctive so I think uh, personally I think it's worth doing the funnel correction 
uh, some people disagree with that and think that it's okay as it is. Uh, but we've all got to build them our own way and I wanted to do the correction. So there we go. The after funnel did take an awful lot longer than I expected. I was hoping to post this video either on Saturday or Sunday and it's now Tuesday. So uh, it has taken an awful lot longer than planned. Uh, but it's done now and I'm happy with it. So over the next couple of days, I still want to post uh, a short video on Friday. I don't think it will be as long as the usual ones. Uh, but what I'll try and do for that is just finish off this aft funnel base. It has some vents on it and I might get round to building the uh, two dinghies that go on the side. But I'm not certain about that. We'll see how we go. The one thing that I will do is to build the radio room which goes on top of uh, the structure here right in between the two funnels. But again that's something that I'm not going to glue in place because it has two very large aerial spreaders on the side which come right out onto the uh, shelter deck and uh, they're just going to be too exposed uh, to, to fit in place. But I'll build the structure I think. So that's it for part 14. I hope that those of you that are intending to do the funnel modification found that useful. Uh, there are other ways, as I said at the beginning of the video, of, of tackling it. And a lot of people will just want to leave it as it is. The difference is relatively minor, but it's just what you want to do with your model. So I'll be back on Friday, back into the routine for Friday um, with just a short update. I think it will be. Uh, but that's it for part 14. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you hopefully next time for part 15. Bye for now.